Yo, flag dude, I revised this paper and you still gave me an F. No way. How can it still be an F, if I revised it? Are you suggesting that the fact that you revised the paper is, in and of itself, evidence that it is better than the first draft? Well duh. That's what revised means. One would hope so, but, sadly, this is not always the case. This is what is called, an oversimplification, or, should you ever care about proper terminology, a fallacy of, dicto simpliciter. Though revisions can, and often do, improve papers, the fact of a revision itself is insufficient to establish that the paper has indeed improved. Okay, but look at my arguments. I did exactly what you said and gave good reasons to prove a controversial thesis statement. And what was this brilliant thesis statement? That, no matter what stupid biologists say, tomatoes are really vegetables. Ah yes, now I recall. And, remind me, what was the first point that you made in defense of this stunningly original piece of rhetoric? Tomatoes are vegetables because they taste vegetable-y. You can't argue with that. No, I don't suppose that I can. Not because it is a good argument, but because it is completely circular reasoning. That tomatoes taste like vegetables only counts as evidence that they are vegetables if you accept the premise that things that taste like vegetables are indeed vegetables. Which is precisely the point that you should be trying to prove. Like whatever. But what about my second point? That the Supreme Court decided in 1893 that tomatoes were vegetables. I wrote four whole paragraphs on that. You did indeed. And, amazingly, your four paragraphs have the same words in them as the four paragraphs in the Wikipedia article on the same subject. But no matter. Citing the Supreme Court on a matter of biological definition is simply an appeal to authority. It sounds persuasive, but it is not. Courts have authority to rule on who pays what taxes, but they are not the final arbiters of scientific truth. They cannot declare something to be a vegetable any more than they could declare you to be a turnip. Or, for that matter, a student. Okay, but what about the consequences that I wrote about in my last paragraph? If people start considering tomatoes to be a fruit, then they will have to put them in fruit salads, which will lead to tomato shortages and price fixing in South America. And this will cause democratic governments to fall to the communists, who will promise free tomatoes to everyone when what they really mean is a bunch of bland, homogenous ketchup. Yes. I do remember that you wrote something like that. I must say that it is not the likeliest scenario I have heard this week. But even if it were, it would still be a slippery slope, or an argument based on some supposed negative result that may occur down the road if something relatively minor happens now. But slippery slope arguments are not logically valid. If you want to argue for, or against, a proposition, you must do so on its own merits, not on the vague and unsubstantiated threat of some terrible calamity down the road. I am getting sick of this. I'll tell you what. If you give me a better grade, I won't come over to your house tonight and kick your butt. Ah uh, yes. We end where bad reasoning and inept arguments always end with an appeal to force. A desire to secure an outcome, not by rhetorical power, but by sheer physical domination. It has always been thus. Unfortunately however, both my butt, and the considerably more sizable butt of my 150 pound Doberman pincher, are just going to have to take our chances.